Good afternoon, Word of Grace family. Today is Monday, June the 22nd, 2020, and welcome to today's edition of Five Minutes of Encouragement. Now, as usual, the scriptures that I reference during this talk will be in the description box of this video. I ask that you both like and share this, hashtag Five Minutes of Encouragement. Today, family, I wanna talk about opportunities that we see in Christ daily here and now in Northern Virginia and throughout the world. As I go in and out of stores now, um, we're all required here in, in Virginia to wear face coverings. And <laughs> I, you know, I wear one, I, I bought one that has these special loop, loops around my ears and looks like a Darth Vader mask. And there's so often when I'm walking out of that store, <clears throat> I'm ripping off part of it so the mask is, hang mask is hanging off to the side, kind of like Maverick in Top Gun after he had just finished a, a dog fight. And you rip the mask off and you're breathing heavy because you don't like wearing it. And so every time I put that mask on, now rather than go into this mode of, God, why are we doing this? or what, I, I use it as an opportunity to remind myself of something. <clears throat> you see, the mask is a face covering designed to protect you from things coming into your body. Every time I put that mask on, I remind myself of another covering that I have, and that is the covering of Jesus Christ and his blood, which allows sin and other things that go against God's perfect will for my life from coming in. So I am protected. So every time I put the mask on, I am reminding myself of the covering that God provided for me. You know, many years ago, and, and, and again, I, I, I use day-to-day -day life as opportunities, and I always try to play little games in my own mind just to keep me in the right frame of mind. Several years ago, 2011 or 12, if, if I'm recalling correctly, I was having some heart problems. And uh, I, it's like my heart was skipping a beat. <laughs> and it, this went on for a while. <clears throat> and I went to the doctor and he told me, you have, or you're suffering from premature atrial contraction. And if you've ever had it before, you know, it's, it's a horrible thing. It gives you headaches, it just, it makes you dizzy. It was horrible. But as soon as he said that, my mind saw the words, premature atrial contraction. And in my mind, I said, P-A-C, P-A-C, paid for at the cross. And so every time that symptom showed up, I reminded my body that what it was going through was actually paid for at the cross. Now, the reality of the state of being, of being in Christ is instantaneous. Sometimes the manifestation of that takes time. Why? Because there's a whole lot of you standing in the way of it. There's a whole lot of me standing in the way of it. And by whole lot, I mean, for me, there's over 50 years of me standing in the way of the reality. And for some of my classmates, you know, who I went to high school with, one in particular, uh, I'm not going to call his name, but his name is Mark. He's 20 years older than I am, so he's got 70 years of himself to deal with. <laughs> so, family, every time something happens in your life, utilize it as an opportunity to remind yourself, which brings me to a very particular, very special section of scripture in the book of Corinthians that I misunderstood for a long time, and I'm gonna to bring to you the nuance and the understanding that I got out of it from looking at the he, uh, looking at the Greek rendering of that text. So in 2 Corinthians, we look at this, uh, this passage of scripture where we go through and it tells us, you know, bringing every thought into the captivity of Christ. But I wanna bring out a very special nuance in that. And I only found a few translations in English that actually bring out the Greek nuance. And so the translation that we're going to look at today is called the Darby, D-A-R-B-Y, Darby translation of the Bible, a very well-respected one. And uh, if you have a, an online Bible, you can definitely look it up, but it will be here on the screen for you. 
2 Corinthians 10 3 for walking in flesh we do not war according to flesh for the arms of our warfare are not fleshly but powerful according to God to the overthrowing of strongholds overthrowing reasonings and every high thing that lifts itself up against the knowledge of God and leading captive every thought into the obedience of the Christ. So what I want to point out to you is the nuance in that last verse that we just read. So I'm going to re I'm going to put that back up and then I'm going to highlight two words that appear in the Darby version of it that don't appear in the King James or the New King James um, because they are highlighting the nuance that is in the Greek. Overthrowing reasonings and every high thing that lifts itself up against the knowledge of God and leading captive every thought into the obedience of the Christ. See, the, the nuance that I get out of looking at that in the Greek is that there's a definitive article in there twice. It says the obedience of the Christ. But when you read it in the King James Version, it, one of those definitive articles is missing. And so it makes you say, I'm, I'm bringing my thoughts into captivity to Christ. In actuality, I believe what the text is trying to get us to see is that everything that's coming against you, you have to remind it of the perfect obedience of Christ. Why is that important? Because of the perfect obedience of Christ, everything that he did and everything that he earned is now attributed to you. You get it? Everything that he did and earned is now attributed to you. That's why it's important to bring everything into the obedience of the Christ. His perfect obedience is what qualifies you. His perfect obedience is what sanctified you. His perfect obedience is what makes you holy. His perfect obedience is what paid for everything for you and for me at the cross, which is why whenever premature atrial contraction showed up years ago, I always reminded it of Christ's perfect obedience and that it was paid for at the cross. And do you know what? Uh, it left for several years, came back very briefly for, uh, you know, I want to say it took maybe a week or less, but I just continued to hammer home paid for at the cross and backed it up with all the healing scriptures, whenever it would happen. And it has been five, six years since it has happened, since it has happened again. So family, bring every thought to captivity into the obedience of the Christ. Because of that, you and I can experience what the children of Israel experience. For the Lord God will pass through to strike the Egyptians, and when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your house to strike you. What, what we see there in that scripture is that it says that the Lord will pass over when, or, or when the Lord sees the blood, he'll pass over, which is to say uh, he, he will leave his essence at your door. And because his essence is at your door, the destroyer has to pass on by you. Because the essence of the Lord is all around you, sin, sickness, and disease have to pass on by you. So don't partner with it. Don't partner with sin. Don't partner with sickness. Don't partner with disease. Don't partner with spiritual death as we covered yesterday. Because Jesus paid for it, bring those thoughts which would seek to place you under the dominion of those things. Those thoughts need to be reminded, need to be brought into captivity to the obedience of the Christ. Family, that's the beginning of living an overcoming life. That is the beginning of manifesting the goodness of the Lord in your life. Family, this has been today's edition of Five Minutes of Encouragement. Now, as usual, I absolutely love and adore each and every one of you. But more importantly, Jesus loves you. Go make it a great day, family. We'll see you back here tomorrow for another five minutes.